Hey everybody, welcome back. This is some piping hot TikTok wedding drama. It's fresh off the barbecue. Maid of honor scammer bachelorette trip horror story. Horror story. One of my upcoming brides just told me the craziest story about one of her bridesmaids and she did give me the permission to share this story on TikTok and just leave names out. I am so shook by this and it literally makes me never want to go on a bachelorette trip, especially a bachelorette destination trip ever again. Mm -hmm. So I went to do a makeup trial for Seriously. one of my upcoming brides at a hotel in Miami and I asked her why she was like staying there because she lives in Miami and she was like, well, tonight is my bachelorette party. I was supposed to go on my bachelorette party to Tulum. No but way! But it wound up falling through because of one of my former bridesmaids, actually like my maid of honor. Um, she scammed us out of like $5,000 planning this trip to Tulum. This is so funny that Vanessa chose to <laughs> include this. AV, thanks for including this. Both me and Vanessa just got back from a bachelorette trip in Tulum. And when I tell you that like, this trip has made me never want to go anywhere for a bachelorette ever again, I'm not kidding. They spent that amount of money before they even got to Tulum. It is just, it is so unbelievably expensive. Everyone is scamming you left, right, and center. It is not worth it. Bachelorette trips in general that are destination, it's just, I'll let her finish the story and then I'll add my two cents in later. So I'm obviously like, tell me everything. This tea is piping hot, I need to know more. So she tells me that she <laughs> basically gave maid of honor duties to this one friend that she'd been friends with since high school. And she was also the maid of honor in this girl's wedding as well. But this girl had recently been divorced and was like really hurt about her divorce. So she figured, giving her maid of honor duties and giving her something to like throw herself into and stay distracted would be a good idea. Wrong. So this friend was like, yes, like let's all go to Tulum. I need a girl's trip. So she starts planning this bachelorette party in Tulum. They were gonna stay at this like resort that just opened and mm -hmm. you know, she was gonna get this great deal in some booking website. And the friend, the ex maid of honor collected the money from everybody. And it was like around $5,000 in total. I forgot how many people she said. I think it was like six or seven people, but including the bride, including the friend, it was going to be like $5,000 and she collected all of it, booked everything, sent confirmations to. So everyone's thinking they're all set to go to Tulum. Like she apparently even collected like people's passport numbers. Like she was really, you know, convincing that she had planned this trip to Tulum for them, right? Okay, I'm sorry. Here's your first red flag. Why are you guys giving someone else money to book a trip? to book like a resort. If it's a resort, don't you guys all book your own rooms? That's your first red flag. If you're sharing an Airbnb, it makes sense to give one person the money. A resort? You should be booking those rooms yourself. I'm just saying. But one of the good things about actually going to like a hotel is that you can, it is your responsibility. <laughs> Never booking an Airbnb again where people send me money. Never again, all right? I'll say that right now. But the good thing about going to a hotel or a resort is that you book it yourself. That's your first red flag. So my bride was even saying how grateful and happy she was that she had a friend plan her bachelorette trip and that she really trusted her maid of honor and she felt so grateful that everything was taken care of. And even like the other bridesmaids chipped in for the bride's portion for the bachelorette trip. Okay. So she was like really confident everything was set, right? Over the summer, the maid of honor that had booked everything basically started blowing her off for a new guy that she met. So she had a dress fitting where she had an emergency with her original dress and needed to pick out another one or like get something like customized. And her maid of honor like completely blew her off and she was like really upset about it. And she just like let it go because she knew that she like went through a lot with the divorce and kept giving her chances. Okay. So my bride told me that she kept giving her maid of honor chances to redeem herself and she was like failing miserably. So she figured, you know what, like, let me just like go out to dinner with her, clear the air. Maybe like this whole process of like watching someone else get married is tough for her. Like, let me just fair. see where her head fair, is at. Fair. So the bride and the maid of honor go out to dinner with the fiance of the bride and the new guy that the maid of honor is dating. And apparently this guy that the maid of honor is dating is like totally bad news bears. The bride said, I think he was like on something. He was ordering a million drinks, got wasted, didn't even offer to pay, was saying like vile things at the table, was like rude to the wait staff Ooh. and it left a bad taste in my mouth. So Ooh. the bride said she waited a couple days and then reached out to her maid of honor and the maid of honor was like, oh, isn't he great? And the bride was like about that. He's not coming to the wedding and I don't think he's good for you. And apparently oh. the maid of honor just like went ballistic. And the bride wow. was like, listen, if this is too much, I can ask like somebody else to take this over because like I need more support. And the maid of honor was like, I'm done. I don't even want to be in the like wedding party anymore. I'm done. Like, don't, don't ever talk to me again. 
my bride said that she like didn't want that and she was like trying to talk her maid of honor down and she's like listen if this is too much for you seriously we can ask somebody else to do it if you need a breather let me know i just don't want you to like walk out of the bridal party we have my bachelorette party you're one of my good friends like i care about you but i just need more support right now maid of honor was not having it and she just like blocked the bride on like every social media outlet blocked her number and the bride was like i don't know what to do because number one this is my maid of honor and we have an entire vacation plan to another country this is where it gets kind of weird my bride told me that not only did she block her she blocked her fiance she blocked all of the other bridesmaids and people in the bride's family after taking so all their money she's freaking out because her and her girls paid all this money to go yeah. on a trip to tulum that was like Ooh. coming up in a few months and this girl blocked all of them and she was the one who planned and coordinated all of them she has all the details oh no nobody else no, no, no. really has details besides no, the no, no, no. confirmation come on, come on, numbers come on. And they sent all of her money. Hey, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm really not about like victim blaming or anything, but like, just like for the record, if you guys ever go on a bachelorette trip, if it's like a hotel situation or a resort situation, you should be booking your own rooms. Like do not give somebody money to book rooms for you. Sometimes hotels, if they find out if there's a bachelorette trip or a wedding, you'll get like a discounted rate, but everyone books their own rooms. <laughs> Trust me on this. You do not want to have to deal with sending somebody money, people dropping out, someone sending you money and they're dropping out. And then you have to find other people. No, just like telling you right now, do not make one person responsible for booking accommodations. Would you make one person responsible for booking flights? No, you wouldn't. You would book your own flight. So do that. <laughs> You probably trusted this girl though. So like, it is what it is. It's just like for the future, don't let anybody else be booking stuff for you. Honestly, even Airbnbs at this point, it's like, let's get an Airbnb. Let's not, let's not. I'll get one and you get one. <laughs> I'm over it. I wait till everybody's married. So I don't have to deal with this anymore. So this is all happening when they're less than three months out from this Tulum trip, right? And they don't know what's going on because the person that planned all of it has all of their money, has all the confirmation, is MIA. Mm -mm. So my bride says after several weeks, they finally got a hold of the ex maid of honor and she says that there is no trip and that she will make oh. sure that they all get their money back. The bride is like, what? There is no trip. Like wow. we're gonna get our money back. Did you just take all the money and run? Did you spend all of it? Like what's going on? My bride called the all-inclusive booking service that her maid of honor alleged that she booked everything through. And unfortunately, the person that was operating on the other end was like somebody in South Asia that did not really understand the situation. So she was like, I was at, you know, a loss. I didn't know what to do. So I finally called the resort to see if there was any information I could get. And there was a reservation under the maid of honor's name. But here's where it gets weird. It was for two people, and this was for a group of bridesmaids. Oh, she so booked it for her and her man. My bride is thinking that apparently the maid of honor booked this vacation for her and her man using all of their money. Okay, so here's what I think happened. Because she started seeing a guy like later on, she said she booked the trip, had, had all these confirmations earlier on. I think she genuinely booked the trip for all of you, okay? And then, you know, you guys had this big fight, et cetera, et cetera. You didn't like her man. You said he's not coming to the wedding, et cetera, et cetera. She just had a divorce. She probably, you know, like whatever. He, you're in your Delulu stage at the beginning, all right? You're willing to like overlook some red flags in a new relationship. She probably changed the reservation so that it was just her and, and and this man that's it i'm telling you that's what happened apparently the resort in tulum was being like extremely cooperative and accommodating but they said that there wasn't really anything that they can do besides give them some sort of a discount but it was just honestly too late for the dates that they wanted to go mm -hmm. the maid of honor like apparently had nothing to say and winded up sending them like three thousand dollars but still owed the bride around two thousand dollars my bride is so much better than me because I would lose it. Like, yeah. I would lose it. She said that she's still working through it with the maid of honor, but like I said, she is better than me. I think that she might be going to small claims, but I'm she not should. too sure. She On should. a much happier, more positive, and lighthearted note, at the end of the day, they did not go to Tulum, obviously, but the bride's fiance and all of her friends, like fiancés and husbands, all chipped in for the girls to have oh, like a Miami nice. staycation kind of bachelor yes. party. And they had a spa day and like a dinner and a oh, night that out great. that was all taken care of by the guys. Love that. This is why we need to stick to bachelorette parties being like a night out in the city. That part, at a hotel that part. Local. 
dinner somewhere local, not Period. these crazy international extravaganzas that bring trouble. Okay, so to that point, I've been on a few like destination bachelorette trips now. And honestly, the multi-day, like everybody's putting toward thousands of dollars. Like there is so much that went wrong. To me, honestly, made me not want to do it. Like if I were to have a bachelorette, I don't think that I would leave Toronto or the area of Toronto. Having it be like multi-day like that, it just wasn't worth it. And if they spent $5,000 before they even got to Tulum, <gasps> I know that you were bummed out that you didn't get to go, but honestly, it's, <laughs> yeah. Tulum is not a destination that I would recommend for a bachelorette trip. And I am at the point where if someone is ever dumb enough to marry me, <clears throat> like, I don't think that I would do a destination. I think it's just like a one day, you know, you like, you have a big party, you like go on a boat or like have a barbecue or something, something just like one day. Yeah. That's where I'm at right now. It was fun, okay, it was fun. Like there were a few, like I did have some fun times, I did. The good thing is that the bride had a good time, which is what honestly it really is about. It's about the bride and what she wants to do. She had the time of her life, which is the whole point. I'm glad that we could do that for her. Doesn't mean that I'm gonna do it for myself, you know? <laughs> I'm just, I'm good. Have a barbecue and then kick everybody out at 11 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There's this girl going viral on the internet right now because she flew all the way out to Scotland for one of her friend's weddings just to find out that she wasn't invited to eat dinner with all of the other wedding guests. Wait, For the no. sake of the story, we're gonna oh. call our main character Amy. So Amy and her other friend Jill are invited to one of their Ooh. friend's weddings in Scotland. And so they decide to book all of their travel arrangements together and go together all the way to Scotland for their friend's wedding. When they get to Scotland, they go to the bed and breakfast that they booked. It's run by this little sweet lady, and she offers to drive them to the wedding the next day. The day of the wedding, the bed and breakfast lady drives them to the ceremony. The ceremony is beautiful as expected. And after the ceremony, they remind everybody to go out to this other venue for the reception dinner. Okay. Amy and Jill call the bed and breakfast lady and ask if she can transport them over to the dinner. When they arrive for the dinner, they notice that there are seating charts at the entrance. So they're looking at the seating chart, trying to find their names on it to figure out where they need to sit. All of a sudden, the security person walks up and asks them to see their invitation. And they travel a long way, so they didn't think to bring their Whoa. invitation. So they tell the security officer their name, Amy and Jill. He looks at the list and says, uh, you're not on the dinner list. No. Um, I do see you as a wedding guest, but you weren't invited to the dinner. Whoa. Amy and Jill are super Hell confused. No. They're like, why would we not be invited to the dinner, but just the ceremony? I mean, Weird. after all, we flew all the way to Scotland. Period, yes. The security guy lets them know that while they're not invited to the dinner, they can come back in an hour when the dinner's over to come dance and enjoy uh, cocktails. Oh, absolutely I not. The security guy also mentioned to Amy and Jill that at the very bottom of their invitation in small font, it indicated if they were a dinner guest or not. Oh, no. And Amy no. and Jill did not see this on the no. invitation in small font. Wait, are people doing this Amy now? and Jill are pretty upset because they're in the middle of a place that they don't know anything about Scotland and they now have to figure out what they're gonna do for dinner and it's not like they could just walk down the street and go eat dinner somewhere else they would have to travel to wherever they're gonna now have to eat dinner not to mention their ride is the bed and breakfast lady and they did not tell the bed and breakfast lady that they would need another ride in between all of these things just to eat dinner they decide, you know what, it's stupid for us to go eat dinner and then come back. So they decide to just call the bed and breakfast lady and get picked up and not come back. But what do you guys think about this? Is it weird to not invite your guests to dinner? Yes, yes. I would say that if your guests are traveling thousands of miles to go to your wedding, I've never heard of someone not being invited to the dinner. Like I get that it's expensive, like $150 a plate, but if you can't afford to have people at your reception and people at your ceremony and it's a destination wedding, 
don't invite those people. Like you can't be separating guests like into tiers. That's such a faux pas. Like, I'm sorry, that is so insulting. Imagine you travel thousands of miles to go to somebody's wedding. You spend thousands of dollars on accommodations and flights. And then, you know, you go to this wedding and then you get told that you're not invited to the dinner. Like you can't even eat with the rest of the wedding. Absolutely. Not. Absolutely not. I've never heard of that before. I've heard of people like only inviting family to the ceremony and then having a party after for like everyone. But I've never heard of like only some wedding guests being invited to the dinner. If you can't afford, which is fair, it's expensive to have a dinner. But if you cannot afford to get everybody's plates, you should be getting money from those guests as well. Like it's like customary to give the bride and groom money for your plate. If you can't afford that, don't be inviting those people, especially not if you're at like a destination wedding like at, ugh, hell no ah! i don't know what that sound was but it seemed appropriate let's see what everybody else had to say because i feel like i'm not wrong here <laughs> and i love to be affirmed and told that i'm right that's actually the way to do it in europe small family dinner but more people for the night event the bride should have told them okay Never heard of that. Like where in Europe? Cause like we're th like, I'm thinking like Italian weddings, like everybody's invited to the dinner. Like, no, that's not, what? The other thing too, is that like, that should have been made very, very clear on the invitation. There should have been no confusion. Like the fact that they were even, you know, at the ceremony and they said, okay guys, we'll see you at dinner. But there were some wedding guests that were at the ceremony that weren't invited to dinner. Like, no, that is also when you should have probably told people that like dinner is only for family or whatever you guys need to go and, and find your own dinner. But even that is like, bleh. if you're invited to a wedding, you're invited to all of it. That's what's up. That's what's up. Ain't no way I'm going across the world for somebody's wedding and I'm not even getting a plate. I can, ain't no way. I'd never speak to the bride again. That's yeah, like that. <laughs> Them's is fighting words, but fair. Like honestly fair, that's crazy. And further, who hires security for a wedding? It's like they were expecting this. <laughs> I mean, that's just so exclusionary. Like, you know, it's just, it's just so, you're like separating your guests into tears. And it's like, if I had a wedding, God forbid, <laughs> anybody who would be invited would be close enough to be considered someone that I would invite to everything. The ceremony, the reception, everything. Otherwise you're not getting an invite. Am I right or am I right? So I think I accidentally just got someone's wedding planner fired. So here's a story time. So I'm a makeup artist and I get this email back in November of 2022 from a bride who was looking to book me for her wedding in 2024. She said that she was a referral from a friend of hers from high school who I did makeup for earlier that year. She gave me the venue, all the information, her bridal party details, and I respond back. That all sounds great. However, I am not booking for 2024 yet. Please reach back out in, you know, mid-January, early February of 2023 because that's when I'm going to start booking 2024 brides. She responds, great, no problem. I'll reach back out then. Happy holidays. Stay safe. So I say you too and I don't hear back from her. So yesterday I get an email from a wedding planning company that was quite interesting. So this planner's email says something along the lines of, hi, we're looking for a makeup artist for our client. And they don't say the client's name. They just put client in like bold letters, which I thought was a red flag. And I kept reading and it was like this third date. This is the number of people in her bridal party. This is her venue. She wants touch-ups until this time. Please let us know if you're available for this and include your rates and prices. Make sure your rates include an additional 20% because we take a referral commission from all of the vendors that we book. So I'm like, excuse me, but all of like the information that they gave me about this wedding was the same as the girl who had reached up out to me in like November. So it was like, I wonder if it's the same person. So I usually just ignore or say I'm not available to any type of planner who asks for a percentage or commission from my services in return for booking you for their client that's Did paying them know? to find vendors and plan a wedding for them. Wait, wait, but wait. anyways, something was telling me to reach out to this bride because she, I, I know the venue and I know that they can only accept one wedding a day. So I knew it had to be her. So I reached out to her and I tell her that I'm available. I'm accepting 2024 brides now. And I think that her planner reached out to me. However, if she wanted to book me, she would have to reach out to me directly because I was not comfortable with the email that the planner sent. Oh, good for you. She emailed me back and she was like, first of all, I'd love to book you. I'm so happy you're still available. 
Second of all, I had no idea that my vendors were doing this to you or any other vendors. Wow. I told them weeks ago to email you and ask you how I can get a contract together to get you booked as soon as possible. I knew I wanted to use you for my wedding. I had no idea that they were going behind my back and asking other vendors for money wow. when I'm paying them all over $10,000. No. I booked them over the holidays and they haven't gotten anything done since. I'm so disappointed, but Wait. let me know how I can book you as soon as possible. This bride is super cool. We talked on the phone for like 30 minutes. She sent me a deposit and everything. She's booked for her wedding and I cannot wait to work with her. Wow. But I feel so bad about what happened. She was like traveling for work in the midst of all this. And I looked at the planner's Instagram and she unfollowed them. Let me know if I should make an update when I have one. I'm sorry. Since when do planners add an extra 20% for a finder's fee? That's nuts. That's nuts. Wow. Weddings are insane. Do they just jack up the price 300% on absolutely everything just because it's a wedding? This is not the first time I've heard the wedding planner is just really not doing their job. <laughs> but it makes sense as to why they didn't book anything. They probably sent out emails and people are like, what the f Like, is that normal? Do wedding planners charge a finder's Okay. Wedding planners may receive referral fees or commissions from vendors for recommending their services to clients. These fees are typically paid by the vendors to the planner as compensation for bringing them business. Okay. Didn't know that. This article says, why are kickback and referral fees illegal for wedding coordinators? Okay. So some, sometimes it's illegal. Never heard that before. Let me know if you have. There's something that leaves like a very sour taste in my mouth about that. Especially considering you're already paying them 10 grand. Catholic churches, you can't book until one year out and then be like, get out, take photos outside, we have a Quintus Hera next. Wait, wait, actually, no. Oh no. Uh oh. Oh. No, 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 oh no. no. Oh look uh -oh. at it, he's literally kicking your oh, veil. No. Stop it! Get the f out of here, sir, sir. Excuse me. Absolutely not, no. Shoe veil do not go together. Like he is physically kicking them out. Kicking the bride's dress. <laughs> That's so nuts. That is not very Catholic of you. Or is it? I don't know. I can say that because I'm Catholic. <laughs> when someone inquires for wedding photography with a 2K budget and I send back my Maybe starting prices of 8K. Tiny little bit. This photographer is getting a lot of backlash for releasing her prices, which is 8,500 starting. Now I should look at her gallery. Is that her? Is and that, let's oh God. see if these pictures are worth 8,500. Now with this oh. picture, I can see the intent, right? Wait. Going for that old, timey, rustic. I dare say you did not capture what you thought you did. What I did see is she's a very big fan of blurry, blurry photos. Blurry photos. Bessie, we gotta bring up that shutter speed if we uh if we wanna take a photo, just FYI. You can add in some blurry photos too if you want, just for stylistic purposes. But let's make sure that we're also getting some that are sharp. I just feel like the jewelry placement, it's just not working. It's mm -hmm. really not. It's giving nothing. Now, this woman is stunning, but this picture looks like it was taken in somebody's back. On Instagram. Again, she's stunning. She's beautiful. She is giving. But the photographer, it just looks like this is in somebody's bathroom. There's nothing it probably is. special to the photo. That's like that wow factor. Yeah. I would say posing wedding dresses for a photo is not her strong suit. Mm. Obviously, everybody should charge what they think they're worth. If you think you're worth $8,500, go ahead and charge for the $8,500. But if I got my wedding photos back and they looked anything like those, I would request a refund. Actually, I would dispute it with my card company. Hey, but to be fair, like if you booked this photographer and you saw their work and you were familiar with their work and you paid them $8,500 and you're surprised to get back photos that you're less than happy with, that's also on you. You always got to do your research. When you're booking a photographer, you got to make sure that their portfolio lines up with what your vision is for your wedding photos, okay? From one photographer, former photographer to another, like there's there's some vision there. Like I can kind of see the style. I like this one of the couple underneath. That's a nice photo. It looks kind of like she shoots film, honestly. Maybe she is shooting film and maybe that's why the prices are that much. 
Yeah, like this to me looks like it was shot on like a film camera or like a disposable film camera. Doesn't look like it should cost, you know, $8,500, which is the cost that usually comes with the lenses and the batteries and, you know, the the assistance and the lighting and like all of the things that the photographer has to kind of like buy in order to create that beautiful artwork. 8.5K for 20 hours of work, including editing, $425 an hour. That's an $800,000 a year job. I mean, it's probably less than that, honestly because weddings only take place usually in the spring, summer, fall months, but yeah. Some of these photos reminds me of the artsy ones I took with my iPhone 4S. Yeah, I would agree with that. It kind of reminds me of like blurry iPhone, you know, like the Insta the original Instagram aesthetic. That's what it reminds me of. My favorite part about this is all the photographers, the professionals coming to defend. Art is subjective. Don't pay for it if you can't. That's why I said, if you're going to hire a photographer, make sure you do their research. You can't be upset if they give you a product at the end that you're not happy with. If you look at their portfolio and it's not the style you want. Maybe this is the style that somebody wants. Maybe they want the photos to look like it was taken like an, on an old fashioned, like disposable camera, which is a style. Art is subjective. As a photographer, you also have to work with what you have. If we show up and they're getting ready in a location that isn't pretty clean, that has good light, etc., et we have to work with it. And that is a good point. A photographer is definitely working with what they have. So like if she's getting ready in a room, that's like a bathroom, that's her bathroom or an Airbnb that she rented. Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot lot that we can change, especially if we're shooting natural light film as well. That is some TikTok wedding drama that's fresh off the barbecue. And uh, you should probably eat that because it's getting cold. Subscribe!